Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back with you again tonight for our Colossians chapter 1 teaching. This is part 5. And I'm glad to be here preaching and teaching the only thing that God's working in, and that is truth. The truth of who Jesus is through what He's done for us all at Calvary's cross. So if you would, grab your Bibles and turn with me tonight to Colossians chapter 1. And tonight's message is titled, A Faithful Minister of Christ. Because that is exactly what the Lord is creating in each and every one of us who are learning to trust in the sacrifice of Calvary that are called to preach and proclaim the Gospel. And it's for the perfecting of the saint. So if you could, grab your Bibles, open them up, Colossians chapter 1, while you're getting there. If you're not already there, I'll open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before You in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and we just thank You, Lord, for this time that we've set aside, Lord Jesus, to come before You, Lord God, and look to what You've done for us all at Calvary's cross. That way we may learn of You and and grow in what we're hearing and understanding as faith is imparted to our lives through the person of the Holy Spirit who ministers everything to our heart and life that we need through simply believing that Christ has already paid the price. He's given His life and He made the way for all to go free. And when we look to Calvary, Lord God, we can walk in experience of who You are as we are learning of You through believing in what You've done for us all on the cross. And Lord, I just give You all the praise. I thank You for the people who are tuning in tonight, whether whether tonight is, it is tonight or later on down the road. Lord God, I just ask You to move in their hearts and lives, Lord, to impart that which is needed, Lord God, so that we can grow together in the unity of the faith, Lord God. And and, and to that perfect man, Lord, to that one who's being matured and the things that are of You. And Lord, we just give You all the praise and all the glory. And in Christ Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. In Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verses 3-7, through 7, It says, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. There's no other place to hear of it. Of the hope which we have laid up for us in heaven, there's no other way for faith to come. There's no other way to develop hearing for that which is right outside of the Word of the truth of the Gospel. Everything we need is in the One who came in the likeness of sinful flesh, who is the Word of God. And the Bible says He he came and dwelt among us. And we beheld Him as as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's the one who laid His life down so that we could go free from the dominion of sin and learn to live that way every day, bearing the fruits of righteousness and true holiness. Verse 5 says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is coming to you as it is in all the world, and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. And I'm going to read verses 4 and 6 again. It says, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints, and verse 6 says, which is coming to you 
as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit, as it does also in you since the day you heard of it. The word of the truth of the gospel is the only thing that can bring the faith of the Son of God into our hearts and lives when we believe it. And it's done by the power and person of the Holy Spirit because we're believing what the word of the truth of the gospel it it is. It is Jesus Christ and the work that He's carried out for us all at Calvary so we could experience Him working His word into our hearts and lives by the truth that He came to set us free and deliver us from sin, which is only found in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the blood is everything that we need. And when we're entertaining only the Gospel alone, it produces hearing. It gives us hearing so we can hear of the faith of the Son of God so it can be imparted into our hearts and lives because we're trusting in the exclusive avenue of Jesus Christ and the cross alone, knowing that we can't know Him in any other way. But when faith comes by hearing, the hearing of it produces a knowing the grace of God in truth. It's what causes us to experience who He is working in our hearts and lives so we can become grounded and settled in the things that are of God so we can walk in maturity, so we can grow in grace, so we can turn from things that are not right in our lives because we're trusting in the One who's done everything right for us and He carried it all out on the cross so that we could receive all things through Him. But everything that we have need of is only found by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave Himself for us at Calvary's cross, when we are reckoning ourselves, identifying ourselves to have been crucified with Christ. You see, we're no longer who we used to be. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been bought with a price. He's ransomed us out of our sins and our trespasses. From the moment we believed, we was forgiven. But God desires us to take it to take us. He desires to take us from our initial experience of believing and forgiven of sins to where I'm declared not guilty, to where I'm experiencing the freedom from the dominion of sin, to where I'm learning to walk in the maturity that's only found in Christ through faith in the cross. Now, it doesn't mean that things aren't going to blow into our lives at times to try to get us off track. But when they do come into our lives, it's our responsibility to trust in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and take hold on the nail-scarred hand of the Lord and Savior who has bought us and purchased us through the price of redemption so He can lead us through the things that we face even daily. You see, the circumstances and situations that come in our lives are not there to harm us. They're there to mature us, to have us more dependent upon the Lord. Learning to walk in more experience of who He is through faith in what He's done for us all at Calvary's cross so we can grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord and mature unto that perfect man that hidden inner man that He's calling us to be. You see, this is the only way that souls are going to see Christ in us, working through us, so He can affect their lives. Because we're learning to live a crucified with Christ life. We're learning to allow who we, who we were. All them things that rise up in our lives to continue to be brought to captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ 
And He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross for us all. You see, the storms are going to blow in our lives. But God's not intending these things to rise up in our lives so we'll take hold of what's coming our way. It's so we'll continue to take hold on that nail-scarred hand and trust in Jesus Christ all the way through it. You see, the blood is the answer for it all, but the experience of it can only come about to benefit us as we are learning to apply it by faith daily when these circumstances and situations come so we can learn to bear the fruit of righteousness and true holiness right through these things. But when we fail, don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't think that it's all over. Because it's not. Because God desires us to go through these things so that we can see we can't handle it. It's too much for us. That we've got to cast all these things upon the Lord because He loves us and gave His life for us so we could go free through believing in His sacrifice at Calvary for all sin so we can walk in experience of who He is through what He's done for us all on that old rugged tree when we just simply do that one thing and believe. Believe that God already provided the way through the death of His only begotten Son so we could receive the power and the strength, His grace by His mercy to get through these things. You see, that's taking hold on the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. That's believing what Christ did for us all at Calvary was enough so we could experience more of God working in our lives to bring about more fruit to be a benefit and blessing to others. You see, the Gospel is others-minded. It's for the benefit of others. That's why God calls ministers to preach the Gospel. He calls some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. It's for the benefit of the believer in Christ but it's not for the benefit of the minister becoming high-minded. You see, our minds should ever be stayed upon the Lord through us trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ constantly and continually as we're learning to grow through faith by His grace as we're following Jesus through a denial of our own selves because we know that there's nothing good in and of us. If y'all watched me long enough, I'm, I'm pretty sure y'all already saw the bad come out. It's just because God is changing me. Sometimes I fall short. Sometimes I do things that ain't right. Sometimes I say stuff that ain't right. And it's because the Lord is teaching me. But it's not the end. It's not the end when we go wrong. It's the beginning of a greater understanding of who He is when we lay these things down at His feet. You see, I don't want nothing to do with nobody who's got a Gospel that Three strikes and you're out and it's over for you, bud. You got to get on down the road because you ain't got nothing for nobody. You done failed too many times. You see, that's not the Gospel. The Lord, He is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. That's why He gives us patience with one another. Because He knows what's in each and every one of us that still has to be changed and that He still has to remove out of our lives. Every one of us still have things in our lives that need to be changed. And the reason why I can say that without fear of any exaggeration is because every one of us are still in a, a fallen condition. 
All those saved by the grace of God and being changed through faith in Christ and the cross for those who are taking hold on the nail-scarred hand of Jesus and allowing Him to direct us on that path of righteousness, every one of us still have things in our lives that need to be changed. If we're not careful, we will use these things as an excuse to pull back. We'll get ourselves right down into one big old pity party to where we, we just convince ourselves that we can't go any further. This is the end of the line. I've gone as far as what I can go. No, the cross is the power of God to change those who will continue in the faith. We've got to continue in what Christ has done for us at Calvary so that we can continue to grow in His grace and walk in understanding and come to a place of maturity in this Gospel to where we're strengthened by the arm of the Lord because we believe that report and that report alone. You see, the blood is the answer for everything and for all things, but it can only become our answer as we learn to, as we are beginning to learn to apply the truth to our hearts and lives every day in every situation and circumstance. You see, God is creating within us a new man to be Christ minded in Christ likeness so that others can see Jesus. You see, God's changing us and helping us to grow and mature in faith and helping us through every circumstance, through every pity party when we repent of them and turn from those things, through everything that we simply go through. And I'm not here to try to pretend and play games and try to be some super duper whipper whopper Christian as they say. You see, I'm a, I'm a human being who has failures and a tendency to fail God, but I'm not making excuses for my failures. I'm getting up and I'm pressing. I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, and I'm forgetting all those things that are behind me because there's nothing there anymore. Too many times we want to take it upon ourselves to hold on to things and to show it to other people. You see, that's where you messed up. And the reason why we do that is because we want an advantage over somebody. Those are still works of the flesh that have to be laid down at the foot of the cross. There's not any one of us better than one another. The cross brings us into spiritual maturity. You see, when we was a child, we thought as a child, but now that we're older, we put away childish things because we're going on into maturity. I just look around at the way growing up as a kid was and in and, and school and you had your popular kids and then you're not so popular kids and then you're absolute people that that just you knew wasn't never going to become and amount to anything. All those things are just labeling people according to the flesh. We're not called to do that. We're not called to categorize ourselves. We're not called to label one another. If a person's saved, they're saved. The fruit will be there. If they're learning to walk in the faith, then praise the Lord. Let them walk with us and let them grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, together with us. But if they're trying to lead us away from the cross, then we need to shun them and turn away from them. You see, the cross is the solution for all things. And you might be wondering, how do I know to shun them? Are they trying to lead you away from the cross? Give them Calvary and the Holy Spirit will do it through you. 
He's the one who works in our hearts and lives to bring about the victory. And I didn't mean to get all off on this here tonight. It, it's just things that are that are still here. They're going to come up because they in here. So we're going to go through this. But the blood is the answer for all things. You see, it's not about a certain person's church, where they attend church at, or, or, or what they got or what they ain't got. The bottom line is what is the message that's being preached? Is it Christ in Him crucified for all things? And if it's not, then this is the question i got to ask myself then why am I entertaining it? If it's not Jesus Christ and Him crucified for everything that we need to show us how to walk in maturity and to be able to grow in the grace and knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ through the victory that He's won for us all at Calvary, then why am I trying to entertain doctrines of devils? Because if it's not the cross then it's another gospel and that's what it has to be. You see, these are things that can only be worked out in our hearts and lives as the Lord is drawing us nearer to Him. And I know there's still many things in us that have to be changed. And God is doing it, but He's only using one form of doctrine and that's the preaching of the Gospel. That's why I was talking about sound doctrine the other night. There's only one sound doctrine. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified for all things. If we're trying to build upon anything else, then it's not the Gospel. The Gospel is the cross. The doctrine is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. When we believe it, it becomes sound in our life because the Holy Spirit makes it that way. I mean, we've been so messed up by church government that we forget that the government is on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. I ain't here following no church government. God puts me in order through my faith and trusting in His sacrifice at Calvary. And He's not going to uh, teach me to be acting out in other ways that, that are not right and pleasing to Him. He, he's going to be teaching us to grow together in the unity of the faith unto that perfect man, that one that's coming about to be matured in the things that are of the Lord so we can experience who He is working in our hearts and lives so we can grow by His grace and walk in understanding. So we can taste of the perfection of who He is through faith in the victory that He's won for us all at Calvary. So we can walk by grace, understanding that all things are for Him, by Him, through Him, and back to Him as we are trusting in the exclusive avenue of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. But outside of that, it's not anything that God can use. Uh, God's not uh, going to use any bandwagon we want to jump on. I mean, He's not doing it. We see what happened in the Old Testament when Uzziah and a how built a new cart. You see, God's only going to use what He's done in His Son for us all at Calvary. Verse 7, as we'll continue in this Colossians chapter 1 teaching. Verse 7, As you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister, of Christ. You see, the hearing of faith produces a knowing the grace of God in truth. But it also helps us to learn of those who are standing in the grace of God through faith in Christ and the cross 
because they are for us faithful ministers of the Gospel. The minister of the Gospel will be preaching Christ and Him crucified for all things. Not for some things, for everything that we need. Not some days, but every day that we stand up behind the pulpit and minister the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We will always direct the, minister, the, the people, the minister will always direct the people to Calvary for everything. To lay every burden down and to receive every blessing. It all comes by way of the cross. But outside of the preaching of the Gospel, then the people cannot be instructed in righteousness if its context is not Christ crucified. You see, that's what the Apostle Paul came preaching. He pointed out those in the, Old, in the New Testament who weren't preaching it, but he also commended those who were. You see, we are to label those who preach the Gospel among us in truth, in its righteous context, and we are to steer the people clear of those who ain't. Too many times we, we pull back and we don't, we don't preach it as an absolute truth. That if you keep following people who ain't preaching the Gospel in its righteous context, then you're going to continue to live a life of failure and defeat. You see, because it's bringing confusion. A mixture can only bring confusion. And you know what James said? Where confusion is, there's every evil work. You see, Christ clears up all the confusion through what He's done for us all at Calvary so we can walk in understanding of who He is by believing in His sacrifice at Calvary. But it's the hearing of faith which comes through the preaching of the cross that produces the love of God in our hearts for the people of God. That's why we warn. That's why we point the people away from things that are not right and pleasing, such as celebrate recovery and purpose-driven life and, and point people away from uh, those who are uh, responsible for coming up with those doctrines of devils. We point people away from the things that are not right, such as the government of 12, the Emmaus walk, those things cannot do anything but produce self-righteousness. You see, God's not working in those things. But we also point people away from word of faith doctrine. The name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it, and speak it into existence, and, and all that mess and nonsense because it's blasphemy. God is not working in anything that man creates. He's only working through the plan that He had already had made before the foundation of this world for you and for me to bring us back into right and proper relationship with Him through simply believing that the cross is what works and sticking with it. The preaching of the cross does not produce a wishy-washiness. But it causes us to walk with an assurance and a confidence and to believe in the victory that Christ has won for us at Calvary for everything that we face and go through in our lives. It's not a message that we walk around and think we got to 
feel it before we can believe it. You see, we got that backwards. Our feelings will have us going in the wrong direction and walking astray away from God. When the truth of His Word will lead us on the path of righteousness whether we feel it or not. God didn't baptize us in the Holy Spirit so we could feel it. He baptized us in the Holy Spirit so we could preach it in the power that He works in so souls could be saved and lives could be changed. The experience of who God is working in our lives can only come through the preaching of the cross as we're developing ears to hear the Gospel so that faith can be imparted to our hearts and lives. That when we take hold on that nail-scarred hand of Jesus, we'll be overcoming everything that comes our way. Now that don't mean we won't fail at times and have to get back up and go right back through it, but the Lord's going to lead us through. He didn't bring us in a storm to stay. He brought us to the middle of the storm so we'll learn how to lay everything that we're trusting in down at His feet so we can get up and go right on through this thing. It's building confidence in the one that we're hoping in. That we can have an assurance and walk in victory. And, and I'm sorry for getting off track a little earlier. Just many things are going on in my life that, and I know that the Lord's going to bring me through these things. But the experience of who He is can only come about as we're trusting in what He's done for us all. You see, Jesus loved us enough to die for us on that old rugged cross so that we could walk in that experience daily and learn to glory in that victory every day. You see, Jesus paid the price and He's worth it because He's worthy of it all. The experience of God working in our lives is for the benefit of those around us. Those we go to church with. Those we work with. Those who we may just pass by. And, you know, we, we never know. We never know. But, but it's up to us for our lamps to be being filled and constantly filled with oil so that we might share the love of God with others. That we might share what we're experiencing in our own personal lives with souls in these last few moments of time that we've got left. As, as this church age, it is wrapping up and it's coming to a close. You see, God wouldn't that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance so that we can walk in an experience daily of what it is to take hold on the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. So the victory that He's won for us all will have us walking in triumph through every storm that we face. It doesn't mean that we're not going to stumble here and there. But even in our failures, we're triumphant in Jesus Christ. You see, He's breaking us of dependencies upon ourselves and us trying to fix things to bring us through that hidden inner man, the one that He's molding and fashioning, the one that's reigning on our hearts supreme because He's the one 
that's representing Christ and living the crucified life so the old man can no longer dominate anymore that old carnal nature. As the Lord is bringing us by the person and power of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives through the, through the preaching of the cross, which is the power of God to mold us into that perfect man. And I'm speaking of that man who's being brought about to maturity, and you can go find that in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 12 through 15. We're most likely not going to make it there as I'm already over my time limit, but we're going to go a few more minutes. Uh, in Colossians 1 and 7, it says, As you also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you. I want that to sink in here tonight. The minister of God is for you. He's for the people of God. You see, we don't want people's lives to be led in failure and disaster. And as we're learning to live in this truth and walk in experience of who Christ is ourselves and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior as first partakers of the fruit, it's our responsibility to direct the people in the path that is right. The minister's responsibility is to point the congregation to the true shepherd, to the chief shepherd, to the captain of our salvation. You see, that, that's our responsibility. We can't come in people's lives and control them and make them do this or make them do that. We, we can point out what's right, what path to follow after, which ones to turn away from, But our responsibility is to hold to the faith. To preach Christ and Him crucified for all things. Not allowing our faith to waver, but continuing. Even when it looks like there's no way through a storm that we're facing, We've got to hold the line. We've got to hold it steady. It's already been measured out. It's already been weighed out at the foot of the cross. Everything has been balanced out. It's a just weight and it is to His delight. But it's our responsibility as watchmen on the wall to stay on the wall. To keep allowing the Lord to build His work as He is the author and finisher of our faith in our hearts and lives. So the workmanship that God is creating in us and through us will represent Christ. And we're only going to represent Christ to the degree that we're surrendering our lives over to Him. That takes place through a consistent and constant unwavering faith, a refusal to be moved away from the hope of the Gospel. Because He told us to continue in the faith to the point of standing in it and not going back to the bondage that He's brought us out of. You see, that's what the fleshly man wants to do. The fleshly desires, the lustful desires and affections of our old flesh want to lead us right back down into that bondage that God has brought us out of. 
When the storms blow, it don't matter what storm it is, whatever you're facing, that's what the flesh wants to do. As we've learned and as I've heard, the flesh ain't never going to shut up. But the flesh can be denied. So when the storms are blowing, when it looks like they're about to knock our house over, like we ain't no way we're going to stand through this, keep clinging. Keep hanging on to the nail scarred hand of Jesus because He's going to bring us through. And as long as we keep looking to Calvary, then we'll not only come through it, but we'll come through it in the triumphant victory that Jesus has won for us all, freed from the dominion of sin, no longer trusting in self, with the Lord having a little bit more victory over us. You see, as that's what this is all about is the Lord gaining ground over us in our lives through Him teaching us how to deny ourselves. So I'm going to wrap it up right here for tonight. Uh, the experience of who He is working in our lives can only can come as a result of us continuing to trust in the sacrifice, knowing that the grace of God through faith in the blood of Jesus alone is the only thing that can see us through. You see, the hearing of faith produces all these things so that we'll know with an assurance that His grace is going to bring us through. But His grace is only found in truth. That truth is a man named Jesus because of what He's done for us all at Calvary. And as long as we continue to run this race, clinging to that nail-scarred hand, then He'll continue to see us through. So I thank you for being here tonight. Let's continue to lift each other up in prayer as the Lord desires more things in our lives concerning Him through what He's done for us all at Calvary's cross. And as long as we look to the sacrifice, then we'll be able to grow in His grace and knowledge and understanding. So until next time, stay determined not to know anything among anyone save Jesus Christ and Him crucified for all things. Not some things, but all things. So until next time, God bless you.